Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily. Today I'm going to show you how to create this fun boomerang effect using action footage in Adobe After Effects. Hear me out, this was such a short clip to work with when I shot it on my GoPro, but I knew it had potential, which is what prompted me to turn it into a fun dynamic edit. Now let's get started with the tutorial. So we're in After Effects here, and the first thing we want to do is find our starting point. Where do we want to start this cool boomerang clip? Now we only need about a second of footage because we are looping it. So I'm going to just go through here and see, okay, I like where things start right around the three second and 50 frame mark. So I'm gonna click on my clip and select Alt in bracket, bring it to the beginning, and then go to one second in right here. And we're gonna right click, trim comp to work area. So here's what we're working with. All right, now that we have our clip selected, the next thing we need to do is rotoscope out our character, which is Tori here, the snowboarder. So we wanna crop her out of the entire frame and just show her. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna be using our rotor brush tool, which is native in After Effects. And to make the things go a little bit smoother for me, I'm actually gonna be using my Wacom tablet right here. Now, if you've seen any of my other tutorials, I talk about this a little bit here and there, and I absolutely love this thing because it helps me with masking and sometimes drawing shape layers, but mainly rotoscoping. Now, the other cool thing about this tablet here is that it actually has buttons on the side that can be totally customizable depending on how you use it. So I use this not just for After Effects, but also Photoshop. And I'm also left-handed, so you can program this whether you're right-handed or left-handed, it doesn't matter. All right, so now what we're gonna do is click on our rotor brush right here, and we're going to double click on our clip. And we're going to just make a little mark on our character right here. And right away you see there are different versions of rotor brush. This will vary upon the version of After Effects you're using. At the time of making this video, I have version 3.0, so that's what I'm gonna use. Drag our windows down a little bit just to make things bigger so we can see a little bit better. I'm gonna be doing this whole thing with my Wacom tablet. So I have my custom controls here, and you can see what they're programmed to on the left and right side. So with rotoscoping, if you wanna add anything, you would just draw, and then if you wanna take anything away, you would just hold down Alt, which I have programmed to a button here, and you'll see the red brush. Now when it comes to rotor brushing, we wanna make sure we're accurate with what we're cropping on here, because whatever we crop out in our first frame is going to apply in the next frame. Now things like her jacket are blending in with the snow because they're both white, that's okay. All right, so we rotoscoped out our entire subject here. Now, something very important that you cannot forget when rotoscoping is you actually need to go down here and click this freeze button. What this is gonna do is lock in each and every one of these frames that we just rotoscoped out. If you don't click this, your rotoscope will not stick. So our clip is completely rotoscoped out. So we're gonna jump back to our composition here. You'll see right away, subject completely rotoed out, nothing behind her, which is really cool looking. Now what we're gonna do is create some duplicates and add a little bit of flair. So, what I'm gonna do is go to about the 45 frame mark, duplicate this, I'm gonna click on our bottom layer, click R for rotation, then go up, let's say, seven frames. I'm going to rotate this five degrees, and then I'm going to duplicate this clip again, and with our bottom clip, I'm going to bump this up to 10 degrees rotation, and we're gonna offset these as well. So I'm gonna highlight all my clips, click U, I'm gonna pull up and highlight our keyframes, click F9 to easy ease them, and then I'm gonna click on them and I'm going to drag our handles in, just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is click on my rotation property here, so both my keyframes are highlighted. I'm gonna go over to Ease Copy, which is a free plugin. I'm gonna select Copy right here, and then I'm going to paste those values into our other copy as well. So that way everything is easing in the same way. Now. They come out at the same time, and I wanna offset these just to have a little bit more fluidity. So what I'm gonna do is drag the second set of keyframes, and I'm just gonna drag them down a little bit so it looks like this. And that little bit of an offset just makes all the difference. All right, the next thing we need to do is just label our layers. So we're just gonna call this original roto, copy one, and then copy two. We're going to duplicate our original roto. We're gonna label this background. We're gonna drop this below. And when we click on our background, we'll go do effects and controls. We'll delete our roto brush here. So we're back to our original. And now what we're gonna do is actually add a lumetri color just to enhance the overall uh, look of this clip. I feel like it's a little dark in some areas. So go to our roto here. I'm gonna add a lumetri color. And then with this, I'm going to change our temperature to negative 30. Um, I'll change our exposure to three. And then I'm going to change our highlights to negative 90 shadows eight 
white, negative 36. So this looks pretty edited. So what we're gonna do is just copy our Lumetri values from our original roto and paste it onto our background. Now this looks a little too edited. So I'm going to just drop down our exposure to two here, make some slight adjustments. Now that looks good and it blends in well. One other thing, we also want to paste our values onto our copies. So I'm just going to paste those here. Now things are looking good. The next thing we're going to do is create a mask on our background layer and animate that. So I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to go to our background layer and just focus on this for right now. What I'm going to do is click on my layer, select my rectangle tool and create a giant square. I'm just holding down shift and dragging. All right. I'm going to click control T just to move this around. And to find the exact center point, I'm going to go here and select the title action safe. So now I could find exactly where this needs to line up in the middle. Now, the reason I'm starting off with a square as opposed to just a rectangle is that I want to keep the square the entire time. If we start off as a rectangle and go to a diamond, we're going to see that shift and I don't want to have that. So we're starting off with a giant square here. Now what I'm going to do is click M for mask path. I'm going to set a keyframe right here. So this is going to be our starting point. And as we go in, I'm going to shrink our mask by clicking control T and I'm going to bring this down here, bring it down some more and I'm going to rotate it clockwise just like that. And if we want to see for reference how this looks in relation to our, our cutouts, I'll just pull up our original roto here. And we'll see how this looks so we could see okay like how small do we want this mask to actually be click f for feather feather it slightly to maybe like five and then what i'm going to do here is just make sure this keyframe is dragged to the very end and i'm going to right click keyframe assistant ease out our first keyframe and then ease in our last keyframe here all right so this is what we have so far and it's looking great now it's time to level it up a little bit more so what i'm going to do is go to our project here and i'm going to bring this roto clip into a new composition and we will label this working comp. All right, now what I'm gonna do is duplicate our rotoscope clip and I'm going to hide this top one. And I'm gonna bring in this fun hologram texture that I have. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And what we're gonna do is preserve underlying transparency. So right away at the start of the composition, when I click this, nothing happens, but wait, when we scrub through here and we see our mask starts to form and then we see our actual person showing. So when you preserve underlying transparency, it only impacts the things that are underneath it. And because we did all of our work in our roto clip, it's taking the shape of what that clip is. So now when I bring up our original roto clip, we're back to this. Now we can't see anything. That's because we need to add a simple choker. So I'm gonna go to our bottom roto clip here. I'm gonna put in simple choker. And what this is gonna do is actually expand the edges of our clip itself. So it seems counterintuitive. We masked it down and rotated it down. Now we're expanding it because we have this texture taking shape to what's below. When we expand our choker here, you start to see a little bit of that hologram sticker looking outline, which looks really cool. So I love the way this looks so far. The next thing we're gonna do is create some text. So I'm gonna take my working comp here. I'm gonna drag it into a new composition and we will label this working comp with text. Now here, I'm going to create a solid layer by clicking Control Y, and we're gonna be using this off-white, which is F3, F3, F3. We're gonna drop this below so we can see everything. So now we have things actually standing out a little bit more. And I'm just gonna hide our working comp for now, and we're just gonna create some fun text just to animate a little bit. So I'm gonna write out here, established 1992. I'm gonna change this to like a baby blue color. All right, now I'm gonna change this to a stroke. So I'm just gonna copy my hex code here, flip the switch. So now it is at a stroke and I'm just gonna make this stroke a little bit more bold so we can see it. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just copy our text here, click enter to go below and just paste this in a bunch of times. And now what I wanna do is just do a little subtle animation. So I'm gonna go here from the start, click P, and then I'm gonna go up and I'm going to cycle this up a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll drop it below our working comp here. So here's what we have. Now what I'm gonna do is duplicate this, click on my keyframes right here, and I'm just going to drag this over and see where it is in relation to our original. Bring it over some more. Or I'm gonna right click on my keyframes, go to keyframe assistant, and time reverse keyframes.
Now, not everything is completely centered. So what I'm gonna do is just click on all of our keyframes here. I'm just gonna center this up a little bit. All right, I like the way this looks, but I wanna make our text pop out just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is click on our second text layer here. I'm gonna switch this to bold. And then with our last text layer here, I'm gonna switch this to bold as well, just to have a little bit more variety and contrast within our edit. So everything that's animating down is bold. Everything that's animating up is a stroke. So we're almost there, stick with me. Now it is time for the fun part, the actual looping. And trust me, it is easy. So what I'm gonna do here is go back to our project. I have my working comp with text. I'm gonna bring this in and I'm going to call this looping comp. I'm gonna to go to our composition settings here and I'm gonna change the one second and one frame to four seconds. Duplicate our comp right here. Then we're going to right click, go to time, time reverse layer. And then what we're gonna do is duplicate these one more time together. We're gonna to bring them in, bring it to the end. This is how you create a fun boomerang sports edit using Adobe After Effects. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching and stay creative.